I'd like to call upon Amy's higher self, please. Yes. Thank you. Um, we would like to see if we can do a body scan for her and, and find out what's happening, if there is anything that needs to happen. Can we balance and heal it all? Yes. Yes. Her body is actually feeling pretty fantastic. Her body is loving that she's trying to be more healthy and kind to it. And uh, she's really been uh, watching what she's been eating and cutting out her sugars. And we're really, really happy with the way things are progressing for her. Fantastic. I love that. Wonderful. We were curious about the reason um, why she had to have major surgery on her eyes those years ago. Yes. Well, Amy had some very, very dark days and a lot of her life she's been processing this energy for so long, but she really didn't know what it was. And she really, really thought that there was something very wrong with her. Uh, she was labeled uh, as having a bipolar disorder and then later on uh, depression. And she's, um, in the meantime, she was kind of fighting her body with medications uh, that weren't obviously doing her any good. And she had severe reactions every single time. She tried a antidepressant or a, um, uh, the bipolar medication and uh, it really threw her whole body out of whack. She was very, very depressed and she really just didn't want to continue. The only um, thing that's kept her going was, you know, her children and, you know, feeling like she didn't want to leave them alone in the world. And yeah, she really didn't see a future. She had no dreams, no aspirations, uh, nothing. She just uh, lived day to day. And some days just were even a struggle for her to just even breathe. Very sad when we look back, but she is just doing so much better now that we're, we're really so happy for her. Fantastic. And with your eyesight now, what can you tell us? Um, we actually can tell you that she was told she had a second secondary cataract, um, uh, probably uh, going on to two years ago now, but we have taken care of that for her. So she will not have to have any more surgery on her eyes. And we can also do a little bit of healing on them as well and uh, try to make her vision a little bit better now for her. That would be amazing. Thank you so much if you could. I know she. Mm -hmm. We're sad because she used to love reading so much. She used to read books, sometimes three or four books a day. And she doesn't even hardly read at all anymore now. And uh, that kind of makes us um, a little bit sad for her. So we would like her to start reading again because it, it really does uh, wonders for her when she's uh, involved in a book. Can you tell me more about what wonders it does for her when she's involved with a book? Yeah, she's using her imagination and her imagination is always better than anything that they could, you know, portray in a movie of a book that she's really loved. Uh, she really get she really can get into a story and feel like she's you know a part of the story and um, we've always wanted her to be a writer as well herself but uh, she's tried a few times but it just hasn't worked out for her and uh, we're still pushing her now to uh, pull out her book that she has sitting beside her bed waiting to write her dreams in it and we would really like her to start writing them down. Wow, and so um, what would be the significance of her when she starts doing that? How will she grow from that? It would really help her to uh, remember better if she was to take, we would like her to get up a few minutes earlier. Uh, we know that she doesn't like this and she doesn't even like hearing it because she doesn't love, especially the morning shifts when she's on uh, her day shifts. It's so early for her. And so hard for her to get up, but we would like her to get up uh, like a half an hour earlier before her shift and uh, pull out her book and start writing down what she remembers because she dreams so much because we are communicating with her constantly in her dreams. And we would really like her to remember more than she does. And she's getting so much better at remembering it, even without writing it down. 
but there's so many good messages in there for her and uh, little things that we're trying to point her in the right direction of uh, with regards to releasing and inner work. And, you know, we're trying to speak to her. She knows she had a dream last night that she doesn't mind sharing about um, uh, being scared to go into the basement. And uh, there was um, uh, one of her former residents that she really truly loved with all of her heart and uh, two other ladies that she doesn't know who they are, but we are gonna tell you that they are her grandmothers when they were younger. And that's why she didn't recognize them. And they are, they are right there wanting to uh, give her just messages of love and encouragement. Oh, beautiful. And yeah, we're wanting, yeah, sorry, we're really wanting her to, to know that she can connect with us. We're right here and we're, it's, she's so close, but we know that she's a tiny bit scared of just totally opening herself up. So we really want to help her and give her a little bit of extra healing so that she can know that she has nothing to be afraid of. Fantastic. I know she's going to really um, embrace that encouragement and that message. Thank you so much. Yes, it is. It is one of her gifts. And, and, you know, she's, we've been trying to talk to her for years and years and years. And she's, uh, she had a, she had a, a former boyfriend who is now her very good friend that uh, is also able to connect up with us very easily. And he kind of showed her and told her that, you know, she would be able to do it as well. And that was us telling him to tell her. So we really want uh, her to know that we've, we've been trying to get her to hear us for so long and uh now that she's finally getting there she's so close so uh if she could just really just truly open up and we are showing her right now the beautiful energy that she could feel if she would just totally open herself up to us do you have any guidance for her to how to <laughs> be able to fully open her? yes we, <clears throat> excuse me we just want um yeah, we just want her, uh, like we're already showing her when she's asleep, uh, you know, she's been taking her sleeping pills for a long time and they're blocking a lot of, um, of the communication we're trying to do with her at night, but we're slowly working with her on trying to um, get that so that she can sleep by herself, but we're not quite ready for that yet, but we're getting there and we're trying to uh, sort of almost... Um, take away the effect, some of the effects of the medication so that we can reach her a little bit more clearly. And uh, if she just tries, like we think we said this in another session to her as well, but if we, if she just really tries to um, put herself in the same state that she's in when she does these sessions, uh, you know, she can relax so easily and, and fall so easily into your sessions and she should be able to just do the same thing and just uh, hear, either hear us in her mind or speak us out loud because she hears us in her mind all the time, but she's also doubting that it's us when it, when it always is us. It's not, it's not her own thoughts. It's our thoughts, you know, trying to get our message across. And we really want to use her as a tool to communicate with some of the people that she knows in her life that need messages uh, from their loved ones. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you so much for that clarification and, and confirmation. It is really, really wonderful. Um, okay, so thank you for that. So then we were just speaking before about a special connection she felt with Louise Hay. Are we able to call upon Louise Hay, please? Yes, I'm here. Um, thank you once again for connecting um, with me, Louise. Um, oh, I feel like I should call you Miss Hay. Um, welcome. Um, can you give us uh, some information about um, your connection to Amy? If Are you aware of such a connection? Yes, yes, I feel her and I see her and I've watched her reading through my book time after time after time and she can feel my energy right now and I'm with her and she's just like beside herself with the energy because I have so much love for her. Uh, she was able to connect through my books and she had a, a app of mine on her phone to do um, affirmations. And she's 
gosh, she, um, she was motivated one day just to pick the book up uh, by her uh, guides and her angels. We, we woke her up, they woke her up at five in the morning and uh, got her to pick up the book. And um, yeah, she, she read it through like five times and she really has applied uh, all of the uh, things that I said and she still could do more. And I would like to tell her that she needs to do more mirror work because that's one of the things that I have found works the best for people, especially to gain uh, self-love that's been missing uh, from them. If they just look in the mirror and look into their own eyes and say, uh, you know, they can use any one of my affirmations. Um, uh, I love and approve of myself it is the one that I would recommend the most. And if they just start to say that every day to themselves, looking into their own eyes, uh, it'll be much more powerful now than it was even when I wrote it because the energy in the planet is so phenomenal at the moment. You can, you can manifest things so quickly now. Yes, it's definitely true. So Thank you so much. Um, and so, Louise, can you tell us about your life contract and your purpose being Louise Hay? Yes, my purpose was to be able to uh, live my own lessons so that I could share them with other people and uh, bring them the help and the hope that they needed to, um, you know, to help them on their own with their own lessons. I myself had. Um, uh, vaginal cancer due to uh, trauma when I was a child and um, I was unwilling to let that go even through all my own metaphysical work and um, all the work that I thought that I'd done uh, when I found out I had the cancer I really had to face uh, things that I never that I thought that I dealt with but I really hadn't dealt with effectively at all and um, by sharing my story uh, in and uh, all the things that I learned through many, many, many different ways. And in my book, I would say as well that I've said that as well, that I changed my diet. I changed the way that I looked at things spiritually. Uh, I just changed my whole mindset. And, you know, all those things contributed to me being able to beat the cancer and uh, yeah, carry on to live out a really happy and healthy life. And it was my gift. Uh, you know, to be able to share this all with humanity. Uh, I have nothing but love for all people uh, in this world and other worlds as well. Amazing. Thank you. And so what would your general message to for humanity be today? I want to tell people just to really uh, go within. And the most important thing is to love yourself. So if you don't love yourself, you can't really properly love or help anyone else. You need to work on yourself first before you're helping other people, because um, it's so important for you to love and trust yourself and trust your own tuition. Thank you. Um, it seems like there's still some belief systems out there that loving ourselves first is probably selfish and we need to actually look out for humanity first. What is your response to that? Yeah, it definitely is. It's just like, uh, as an analogy I will use, uh, is if you're on an airplane and the plane is, uh, they believe there's going to be a problem with the plane, you need to put your own uh, air mask on before you can put the air mask on of anyone around you. Because if you don't put yours on first, you're not going to be able to help anyone else. So you need to take care of yourself first. It's not being selfish. Uh, you need to love yourself first. You need to you need to go within and you need to uh, totally love yourself because it will make you so much stronger and so much, it'll make it so much easier for you to be able to help other people. Yes, thank you. And in terms of what are you doing now in the afterlife? Uh, what can you do with us? I am here uh, watching everything unfold. Uh, I am here trying to uh, help anyone who wants to connect with me. I am listening. If you, uh, if you pick up one of my books or if you ask me directly for help, I'm here to help you whenever you need it. Uh, all you have to do is just try to connect with me and I will, will be there every time to help you. I really want to su support humanity through this, the most exciting time uh, that there's been on the planet Earth. 
you guys are so lucky to be able to experience this. Uh, I myself chose to leave earlier because I felt like my work on earth was done and I wanted to be able to help from this side. So I see where you're headed and I see the new earth and I see uh, how exciting it it's going to be for you all to be able to experience all of that and and experience everything that's happening on the earth right now. Uh, it's it's really uh, unlike anything that's ever happened to humanity and uh, you know especially to your listeners, um, they are the people that we really need because they are going to be helping everyone on the new earth to get settled in and uh, to get used to the fact that they were on another on another version of earth and now they're on the new version of earth and that things are totally different. So we really want to, um, uh, I really want to make sure that uh, they all uh, love, love, love themselves and are ready to help these other beings when they need help. Yes, fantastic. If you could give us an affirmation today to be able to help project ourselves forward and to be able to and be open to the shift of the new earth 5T. What would you say to us? Um, I am going to say today for an affirmation, like I already said the one about um, uh, I love and approve of myself because that is always first and foremost my most important affirmation of all. But my second affirmation is going to be I am open and receptive to all the universe has to offer. Beautiful. Beautiful. Do you see any big blocks for humanity? Um, and so can you tell me what they are? Uh, I think that we are struggling to keep a few people in hope right now. And that's why I really wanted to come in today to give a message of hope for humanity. Um, the worst is really behind you. This month of February is a month for growth. And for you to all look within and finish uh, the last of your inner work. Um, a lot of you have already done most of it, but everybody still always has a little bit of fine tuning that they can do. Um, I also really like the idea of you connecting with a group. And I would uh, still encourage any of your listeners that are hesitant about uh, contacting you, um, you know, for the support that they may need right now from, from other like-minded people that they should, uh, you know, uh, quit being hesitant about it and uh, reach out a hand. Uh, they have, they are, uh, they will be among friends if they do. And, uh, you know, no one needs to go through this alone. We all have each other and um, uh, just love everyone and try to uh, help everyone that you can in any way that you can. And, and when I say that, I mean, by just even saying a kind word or just listening to someone that needs, uh, you know, to let go of something and just, you know, by trying to be supportive as you, as supportive as you can to, you know, people that you come across. Because right now in the world with the masks and the distancing and all of that, it's, it's taking people uh, to a place where they're feeling very alone. And, you know, even if it's just someone that's working in a store that you come to or someone that you're passing in your car, uh, just try to send send them some love and uh, even a smile if you can. And that will, you know, uh, you know, they will feel the love that you're giving them and it will give them the encouragement to carry on a little bit further. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you so much. Yes, um, I do appreciate that. Um, offer me in this. Thank you. Um, in terms of uh, people who are still going through their inner work. Um, what would they be noticing now uh, with all the energies happening on the planet? The energy of the planet is actually getting better and better by the day. I know that they have been cranking the energy down a little bit so that they can um, kind of force people to do inner work that they might not have done otherwise. And in general, we see so many people awakening and so many people um, just waking up to the fact that there, uh, that there is more out there to life than just the little, you know, 3D existence that you've been led to believe. And people are waking up to all the lies that they've been told 
and um you know kind of uh doing their inner work with the uh forced lockdowns on people they've a lot of people have had no choice but to go within and um you know it's wonderful for us to see here on the other side uh looking in to see that so many people are waking up and are uh working uh towards the common good for the world amazing thank you thank you so much um and in terms of why i feel um prompted to connect with you today because i feel like you have been sort of tapping my shoulder for a while um was you know, another reason for that or have you expressed um your, your messages for humanity um i have expressed most of my messages for humanity again i just wanted to remind everyone that the self-love is so important because again like you said earlier we are we are prompted you know as a, as a whole to think that that's selfish and that message has been you know uh uh it's been put through the propaganda, you know, on the news, uh, in the papers, even just by a word of mouth, you know, by people that, you know, aren't, aren't awake uh, to others that, you know, if they say don't wear a mask or if they, um, you know, don't keep the six feet distance, if they don't respect all these rules, that they're selfish and, you know, they're not selfish and neither are you for, go for you know, putting yourself first. You need to love yourself before you can help anyone else. So I just really, uh, you know, want to stress that message as well and say, you know, it's it's not too late for anyone. Anyone can do this. Uh, people are growing very quickly now. So if you're just starting today, even just look in your mirror, look right into your eyes and say, you know, I love and approve of myself and, you know, just scream it at yourself if you need to. Uh, just just get get the message through to yourself and everything else will start to get easier as you do that. Uh, I also want to talk a bit about releasing and, you know, everyone really needs to uh, release their old belief systems and just uh, be, be uh, willing to accept the new that's coming in. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> as you can hear, I'm, I feel like I'm releasing a lot at the moment. Do you want to tell us more about what I'm going through? Yes. Uh, you're going through um, a uh, big upgrade, Joanne. So we are uh, really doing a lot of uh, fine tuning with your body to be able to uh, give you even more gifts than you have now to share with the world. Uh, you've already discovered the light language and we feel like uh, there will be more surprises in store for you as well. You are, um, you are truly a gift to humanity and you don't know how many people uh, really count on your messages and uh, your your lovely channeled messages and your sessions. Uh, you know, they are the bright sparks of their day and they are just so relieved to uh, finally hear the truth uh, coming from a source that they can trust. Mm, well, it's just good to be able to get um, trustworthy information from you guys. So, you know, I just want to say um, we thank the connections that we have every day. Uh, with you and um, because it is giving us profound guidance to be able to keep us on the um, I don't want to say the straight and narrow but it's a good track it's a good it's always good wisdom and advice especially when we can apply it um, so thank you so much and can you tell us about um, I know you want us to love everyone and I know you want us to love ourselves but is it self love by some top friends who are not resonating with us um how would you approach um loving them still and keeping our balance and our self-worth worth um love them? yeah that that kind of cut out a little bit but i think that i understand what you mean so um basically yeah if you feel like someone is um you know, not got your best interests at heart, or is um, maybe caught up in their own ego, or uh, is, you know, um, you know, not able to support you the way that you would like them to be able to support you, you, um, we don't expect you to, you know, uh, go out of your way to, um, you know, uh, follow them around and, you know, spread love to them, but we just don't want anyone to be 
holding any like ill will towards anyone or any, um, you know, negative feelings towards them, so to speak, uh, in a really profound way. Like we understand that everyone gets a little bit angry and anger is totally normal. And it is a 3D emotion that you do need to feel. And we just want you to be able to release that very quickly and really try to stay in more of a neutral space uh, where the emotions of the situation are not, uh, you know, dragging you down, so to speak. So we, um, we just really kind of want you to kind of look at everyone with love. Now, that doesn't mean that you need to go around and, you know, be everyone's best friend if you don't feel a connection to them. But we just uh, don't want anyone to, uh, we kind of just want everyone to be able to release any, um, any negative feelings that they're feeling towards anyone, because it's really only hurting you in the end if you, uh, if you feel anything like that towards anyone else. I hope that was the answer to the question you were looking for. Hmm. No, it's just good. I think a lot of people are worried that they're not um, having the big minds if they're, they're not connecting with the toxic friends or family. Sorry, that one was uh, totally kind of cutting out if you don't mind repeating it. Um, people are concerned and have been concerned that if they can't profoundly love the people that sort of love and mentions 3D, um, they don't really want to spend much time with them and they're worried that that's going to um, drag them down and not be unconditional loving beings. So there's just people concerned about worrying about judging themselves about loving themselves, having boundaries and still uh, trying to support them without bringing them down. Yeah, there's no problem with putting up boundaries towards people. Like if you feel like someone's not for your greater good, then there's no reason that you need to spend all your time with them or anything. You know, even if it's your family member or whatever, they might be needing to do their own inner work. So it's it's perfectly fine to, you know, leave them uh, alone to do their inner work. Uh, if they if they need you, they will know where to reach you. I know it's very frustrating for some people right now because uh, some of their families and things are not on the same page with them as far as um, the way the world is going or, or the way that they view the world right now and uh, where they think that they're going. And it's totally okay uh, everyone is waking up in their own time and um, we just want you to give those people the space that they need to uh, get to the place where they need to be. So we don't want anyone trying to, um, you know, force anything on anyone. Uh, it's all right to give them little breadcrumbs of information just so that they know that you're there for them. But there's nothing wrong with you setting up a boundary and staying away from them if you feel like um, they're not there for your greater good. We hope that made sense because the question still did kind of cut out a little bit. Mm -hmm. No, it does make sense. And it's a good reminder because I think a lot of people are trying to have that bigger mindset and be accepted all and love all. And um, sometimes it can be challenging when, um, you know, you wanting to do the boundaries with people. Yeah, we do totally understand that. It's very hard to get, uh, you know, into the bigger mindset 100% because you've been living your life co completely believing uh, something else, you know, is the truth. And now you're um, believing in life contracts and, um, you know, uh, purposes and life lessons and all of that. And everyone isn't there yet. So, you know, you have to kind of, um, you know, even uh, just, just you know, think, uh, we will be there to help you to know to find the right words if you need any help with uh, when you're speaking to other people, you know, about this kind of thing, we will be there. Uh, if you want to use your intuition, we will be there to help you know the right words to say, so that you can, you know, sort of gently, you know, get get a little bit of your point across without, you know, having to tell them the whole um, you know, sordid tale of what's going on in the world right now. Uh, everyone isn't ready for that. And everyone doesn't need that. And it's not going to help a lot of people. So the people that uh, need to know the information know it. And uh, the rest of them are just slowly waking up. And some people 
will not even ever see the bigger mindset until they are on the new earth. And uh, that is just the way that it has to be. Uh, their life contracts have made it so that they are uh, meant to be asleep at the time of the shift. So we just need to really learn to be respectful of uh, people's life, life contracts if we can see it that way and uh, know that if they're still sleeping, it's for a reason. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And gosh, if you've got to convince anyone of your intuition, they're not ready to hear anything. And so, you know, I almost- No, no. And most people, honestly, they know that their intuition is there, but they just don't listen to it as much as they should. And, you know, most of the people who are going to be listening to this session are the people that are listening to their intuition. And we just want to, you know, let them know that they can totally trust it and they need to just- it's, it's like Amy, Amy's higher self was saying to her earlier, uh, you just really need to trust. We want you to trust that everything is going to happen in the right time and at the perfect moment and that we are here for you and we are always supporting you and that we love you so much. And we want you to trust yourselves and trust your intuition and trust that um, it will steer you the right way. You just need to totally let go and release whatever is no, no longer serving you and um, move forward listening to those little voices in your head because that is us trying to guide you. Mm, perfect, perfect. I think everyone will be reminding to say that they love themselves and accept themselves for who they are completely and they will um, embrace that. So thank you so much. Is there any final messages that you have, Louise, for the collective? My final message is just that I see, we see everyone working. Uh, we see everyone, you know, working so hard to do this. And uh, we are so proud and we, we love you all. And we are here and just don't uh, think that you can't call on me or anyone else that's up here anytime that you uh, want to, if you feel a special connection to me, um, if you are looking uh, for some of the answers uh, on self-love, especially you can pick up my book, You Can Heal Your Life. There's uh, lots of great information in there. Um, it is uh, all the answers that you really need for loving yourself are right there. And uh, lots of answers on how to do your inner work as well if you're struggling. So, you know, I'm just one of many people that you can call on. But if you do feel, uh, you know, a special connection with me, I will definitely be there with you as you're reading and I'm willing to connect with you anytime to help you through. Fantastic. Well done. Lovely. And of course, like any work, um, it can be hard or easy depending on your approach. And it seems like with pure integrity and honesty towards yourself and this work, it seems like it's quite straightforward and kind of not the obstacles. Yes, it's very it's actually very straightforward once you start to read it. Uh, all my book is about is just like, you know, just releasing, releasing the things that you've been brought up to believe. And we know it can be very, very difficult at times because you've been so indoctrinated in this lifetime. And, um, you know, even by people that you trust, like your own parents and who just trust that everything uh, unfolded the way that it was meant to for you to be the person that you are today. All these things that happened to you had to happen to you in order for you to be where you're at right now. And um, the, e uh, the easier time that you have with releasing it now, the easier time that you're gonna have moving forward. So now is the time, uh, quit putting it off for another day, just um, do whatever you need to do to get yourself to a place where you can release, especially trauma. And I would say from my own experiences, knowing how difficult it is to release that trauma, but knowing what a difference it makes to your life if you can release that trauma because uh, carrying it around with you is not doing you or anyone else any favors. You need to forgive uh, the people that you feel like have wronged you in this life because you had life contracts with them to inflict the pain on you that they did inflict uh, on you. And uh, both of you, uh, you know, just like you have been on the end of, uh, inflicting pain on people, uh, whether you know that you have or not, uh, just about everyone here has, whether it even just be, you know, um, an argument you had and you said something 
that you, uh, you know, maybe regret saying that may have hurt someone deeper than you think that you did hurt them. You know, everyone has been on both sides of it. And uh, that's part of your life lessons. So, you know, we just, we just really want uh, you to try to see it from the bigger perspective, and uh, try to see, you know, how important all these life lessons were in shaping you into the person that you are today, ready to accept all of this healing that we're giving you, and uh, ready to move forward and help others, uh, you know, to settle into your to the new earth. Mm, perfect. Yes. Um, being grateful for all the opportunities and the experiences for learning and for growth is so perfectly wonderful. So thank you so much. Yes, that's the other thing I want to say too, is uh, you cannot be too grateful. And uh, Amy herself knows because she's done it many a time. You know, if you're not sure uh, what to be grateful for, just sit down with a paper and a pen and uh, write down, you know, from the smallest thing, like the sun coming out, to, um, you know, your, to having your children, to, you know, having a roof over your head, food to eat, um, you know, and whatever makes you grateful and just, you know, really sit and think about it and write yourself a big list. And when you're done the list, you know, look around and see what you have, you know, even if you have lack in your life, like we know some of these people uh, that are listening to your sessions do, it is probably purposeful. And there's probably uh, a lesson in there, which is to make you be grateful for the little things. And there are a lot of people in the world that have a lot less than you do. So, you know, try to look at it from the bigger perspective and see that, you know, just see all the things that you really are grateful for. And the more that you are grateful for, the more, the more abundance the universe will uh, bestow upon you. Absolutely. And also understanding that people with more money doesn't mean happiness or self-love or anything that we assume so money does not buy anything um <laughs> that is it, of great value to the soul it definitely does not and I myself lived as you know just just about like a pauper as a child and had absolutely nothing and then later in my life I did come into money but I gave a lot of that money away as well because you know the money doesn't buy the happiness it was it was all the inner work I did and all the um all the, you know, soul searching that I did that gave me the peace, not the money. Uh, once I had the money, I was grateful to be able to uh, share it with others because you really don't need that much stuff. It, the material stuff doesn't matter at all. And from this side, looking at it, it, it matters not at all. You, you can't take any of it with you. Uh, possessions are just possessions. And, uh, you know, I do write in my books as well that you should actually get rid of, you know, get rid of most of your stuff. Um, you know, every so often, because, you know, you really shouldn't attach any kind of value to any sort of material possessions whatsoever. Yes, absolutely. So true. And so in terms of your material and literature, um, was it from divine connection? Yes, yes, I did many, um, I did uh, many courses in uh, metaphysics, and as well as, uh, you know, lots and lots and lots of my own research um, to get me to the place where I was. And I went to, you know, experts in just about everything that you can imagine, and got their take on it, and then compiled it all into, uh, into one book to try to help people. While well, my main book, You Can Heal Your Life, I wrote many, many other books that go into many, many other things. But that would be the simplest uh, way to put it would be that you can heal your life. So much, so, so much uh, work, and so many, um, hours of me connecting uh to to get that information out in that book amazing did you ever come across Dolores Cannon and her work yes definitely I am uh am and have always been very fond of Dolores Cannon she is a lovely beautiful enlightened soul and I kind of uh um I'm glad that I now get to be with her here in the afterlife Fantastic. You know we're in safe hands when Dolores and Louise are at the realm. <laughs> we, are, we are both here. All you need to do is ask us for help and we're, we're both here and willing and ready to help anyone who is ready for us. Oh, fantastic. How beautiful. Thank you so much for your um, input and love for humanity. Um, Thank you so much for calling me and I'm so glad I was able to give a message to you today.
It's wonderful to connect with you as always. Thank you so much.